Jaden Rashada's departure was unexpected, but that doesn't mean that Arizona State doesn't have a plan. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. And stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrad36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and Google Play. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back in. We have the unfortunate conversation to be had about Jaden Rashada transferring out of the program in case you missed it. It is all over the place. Read up on it. Check out the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. We did a live show reacting to it last night. I had an episode yesterday talking about the the need to go for a veteran quarterback and two minutes after it uploaded, two minutes, Jaden Rashana entered the transfer portal. So I still encourage you guys to check it out. If for nothing else than the last 10 minutes of that episode goes over some potential veteran options to add through the portal. So if you want to get yourself familiar with some names or anything like that, check it out. Stay up to date. It's not totally out of date. Like I said, part of that podcast is going over why they could use a veteran quarterback as well as options. So still check it out, but don't worry. We'll be keeping you up to date starting with this episode as we talk about Jaden Rashada entering the transfer portal. And the big question on everybody's mind is what happened? Well, let's dive into it. What we have learned since Rashada entered the portal. And first of all, Jaden Rashada entered the portal with four years of eligibility remaining. He played three games last year and redshirted. He was banged up and dealing with injury. And then during the spring, he was recovering from a thumb surgery. Well, during spring ball, Sam Levitt, the transfer from Michigan State, comes to Arizona State and plays very, very well. And with how well Levitt has been looked or looking, excuse me, there's been a lot of chatter that he might be taking Jaden Rashada's job. Well, that is what it sounds like has led to his departure. Now, we don't have it from the man himself. We just know that he said he's entering the portal. But I've seen a lot of pretty good intel that he left because he was not going to win the starting job, or at least not as of now. So we'll work with that a little bit. I, I, again, I said this yesterday during the live, I'll say it again. Do not hate on this kid. We need to understand that this is the nature of college sports and there may be more to it than just not getting the opportunity to start there. There may be, other other reasons going on in the background for the for the decision to transfer for him. So I am doing my best to withhold the judgment as well. I can tell you when it first happened, I was very upset. I said as much. I'm still upset, but we've had some time to think about it. But again, this decision seemingly comes after Levitt was pretty much all but pegged to be the starter. This tells me a lot of things. It can it can be perceived in a negative way or in a positive way. And we're going to look at the positive way, which is maybe Sam Levitt is a really good quarterback, which we'll talk about at the end of the podcast as well. We're going to touch on Levitt and why you should be buying into him. But before we get that far, we still need to talk about 
how this came to be. What happened? Well, remember that before Jaden Rashada got to Arizona State, there was the whole debacle at Florida where there was NIL money that was promised that was not delivered. So Rashada was able to get out of his letter of intent and then comes to Arizona State, competes, proves himself, and the rest is history. Well, I know a lot of people are tying that to Rashada. And I've seen a lot of people that will say, oh, well, he's he just creates drama wherever he goes or his heart's not in it. These are things I've seen. I don't agree with them. I think that there's there's definitely some, some interesting stuff behind the scenes, but I don't like that the term of like drama follows him everywhere. I don't think that's very fair to Rashada's part because I, I do blame 90% of that on Florida for everything that happened there. To me, that has nothing to do with where we're at now with Jaden Rashada. Where we're at now is uh, Rashada appears to not want to be in the competition and wants to go somewhere else where he can start right away. Now, funny enough, it's come out since then that Georgia is going to be making a big push for Rashada, which is funny to me because you're not starting there. Carson Beck is starting. And unless he gets injured, you're not starting ahead of Carson Beck. So you're talking about another year on the bench. At least at Arizona State, you had a good opportunity to start. At Georgia, I promise you, you're not going to start. At least not this year. And I love everybody has said, oh, look at that. Another Jaden from ASU going to an SEC school. Now he's going to win a Heisman. Who knows, man? It's it's so early in his career to tell. At least with Jaden Daniels, we knew that the talent was there. Neither here nor there. But a lot got to this point. And the vast majority of it is the competition side of things, which is really disappointing because you were hoping that Rashada was going to embrace the competition. And he said as much. Kenny Dillingham said at the end of the season during exit interviews that he told both Jaden Rashada and Trenton Bourget, hey, we're bringing in someone for competition. And lo and behold, they do. But Rashada told Dillingham, Bring him in. I want to compete. That's that's what he says, is I want to compete. Mm, seems a little farce now. Because you are competing and now you're leaving? I don't know. I'm doing my best to kind of stay as unbiased as I can. There is the fan in me that is frustrated and upset. It's It's just a really upsetting situation i would tell you though it's very frustrating for sure and a lot of people have expressed their frustration it's it's just been a mess from from start to finish but if it really is from a competition standpoint then i'll say it he might have done asu a favor like kenny dillingham has introduced this policy at ASU that you're always going to compete. There is, there's nobody with a safe job. It doesn't matter if you're the quarterback or if you're the kicker or if you're the long snapper or the middle linebacker or whatever, you are always going to be competing. And that's a great philosophy because I got news for you. You're going to be competing at the next level too. It doesn't matter if you're the number one pick or if you are a practice squad player you are always going to be competing for your spot. And Dillingham is establishing that at Arizona State. No one's job is safe. Not Elijah Badger, not Cameron Scadaboo, not Shamari Simmons, not Clayton Smith, no one. Everybody is going to compete every single practice, every single opportunity. Jaden Rashada knew that was going to be the case. And unfortunately, it does not appear that that was going to be something that was going to stick for him. And it's really, it's really frustrating because you also got to talk about like how talented Jaden Rashada was. This is one of the top 15 recruits ASU has ever landed in the the history of the actual recruiting sites. 
you weren't wanting to lose him. You weren't wanting to, to not have that kind of talent. And I've said this many a times, you were going to be linked to Jaden Rashada first and foremost, when you look back at the Kenny Dillingham era and the Kenny Dillingham experiment is you were going to say, well, this was his first big recruit. Let's see how it plays out. Well, after one year, he's gone. And I don't think that that is indicative or reflective of Kenny Dillingham. I think this is far more to do with the landscape of college football. It's not just Jaden Rashada that's doing this either. Like, let's remember that this is just the way that college athletics is right now. As guys are entering the transfer portal at a all-time rate for NIL, for competition, for better fits, for whatever, education. Like, it's it's a beautiful thing, and it's also a very frustrating thing because these guys will just leave. And that's just the situation that ASU has had unfold in front of them, was a very talented player, and Jaden Rashada decides to leave the program for New Horizons, whatever. It happens. It is what it is. But nonetheless, it's still upsetting. It's still frustrating, blah, blah, blah. I'm saying the same stuff till I'm blue in the face. It's... It, it In one sense, it is a unique instance for ASU, but in the grand scope of things, this is happening to everyone. Something else that's worth noting, this is just overall, ASU has only lost two players to the transfer portal since it opened up on Monday. Could that change? Sure. But ASU, for the most part, has a team that's bought into the culture and a team that's ready to, to be part of the change in Tempe. So Jaden Rashada wasn't part of the change. That's okay. We'll move on. We'll move forward. We have to. Of course, there's consequences for the short term and there's consequences for the long term. We're going to get into those in more detail in just a moment. This is the Locked On Sunnables podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I've been told that I am a competitive person by my friends, by my family, and even some of my co-hosts. If you think that's true, well, you know, I've got a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. And it's a great twist on Monopoly where you play and not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly, but I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is, but it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with your friends and people around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in on the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store and Google Play. Passion, drive, patience. It's the winning formula for winning championships, and it's what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because of eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you find that you're having to turn down the volume because of all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 streaming channel programmed for you every day and bringing you the biggest stories of all, all of the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get back into our conversation. We are going to take a look at what happens short term and what happens long term. And 
we'll start with we'll start with short term. What it does for you short term, I'm I'm a little more optimistic about, but it really depends on the fallout. As far as short term is concerned, I still don't think it's really changed too much. You look at the season, you look at the schedule that's oncoming. It was always going to be difficult, no matter if it was me at quarterback or if it was Jaden Rashada at quarterback. You were always going to have a difficult schedule where you visit U of A and Kansas State and Oklahoma State and you host Utah and you take on Cincinnati and UCF and so many difficult games. Mississippi State, this was never going to be an easy schedule for you. But with that in mind, this was still a team that to me was, what's the word? Um, Not confident enough, talented enough to be able to kind of get you to where you needed to be to be able to get to that six win mark. I think that there's more than enough talent here to justify thinking that way. Now, whether or not you actually are able to arrive at that point, that was always going to be a curious case, but did it get more difficult? In one sense, you could say yes, because you lose your starting quarterback. But in another sense, he perceptively, as of April, first of all, April, there was still an entire training camp to compete. But as of April, he wasn't even going to start. It was going to be Sam Levitt. And for what it's worth, both of them are four stars in the 2023 recruiting cycle. So it's not like Levitt is drastically worse than Rashada. It's not like he was so much less known, so much less talented than Rashada was. So you're not really looking at this like, oh no, we got a downgrade at quarterback. Cause I just don't know that that's true. Sam Levitt is a very talented player and someone that I'm going to pay even more attention to next uh, Tuesday at, at practices. There is a lot to digest with Rashada leaving, but part of you wonders if Levitt really is the guy. We'll touch on that more towards the end of the podcast, but for the short term, I'm a little less worried, at least for the upcoming season. The one thing that does worry me, I'll tell you, for the short term, is anyone else entering the transfer portal? That's where my biggest questions, my biggest concerns are. Rashad is gone. Who's next? And maybe it's no one. Maybe everybody stays. But maybe you lose three or four guys. Maybe it's more than that. Maybe you only lose two or three guys, but they're starters. Now you start having concerns. Now you start having questions. Losing Rashada is a big name. But I still feel like you're able to overcome it in the short term. In the long term, that's where I have a little more questions. What does this what does this look like for your program? Like I said, to me, this is more indicative of today's college football than it is Kenny Dillingham. Not everyone's going to think that way, though. You're going to have recruits who look at that and they go, wow, former four-star quarterback, top 20 quarterback in the nation, transferred out of ASU after one year. Wonder why that is. Maybe they start getting a bad vibe. Now guys don't want to take tours. Now nobody wants to entertain the thought of going to ASU. Things get a little more complicated. How does that trickle down for the rest of the roster? Maybe they are all in this year. What about next year? Let's say let's say this year doesn't go the way we want it planned, and it's another three-win season, which is a very realistic possibility when you look at the upcoming schedule. But if that happens, how is this how is this going to be reflected? 
with Rashada? Do guys look at it and they go, man, if we had Jaden, if we had Jaden, we would have won more games. If we had Jaden, this wouldn't have been a problem. If we had Jaden, we would have been more unified together. That's kind of the the next step of the question you have to ask yourself. That's where you kind of get concerned with the long term here. Is the Jaden Rashada departure going to affect you in 2025 for the roster? Is it going to affect you for recruiting? What does that look like? I'm more concerned about the long term than I am the short term. Now that can easily change if X, Y, and Z player enter the transfer portal and X, Y, and Z were starting players. Yeah, I'm hitting the panic button. You still hit the panic button with losing Rashada. But what I tell you is at least they've got a plan in place with Rashada leaving. We'll touch on that in a minute. But ASU is not totally down without Rashada. I've talked to some people and there's a general consensus of this is a big blow. And it is. It is a big blow. But it is survivable for ASU. One more thing I want you to kind of chew on here. As far as short-term, long-term, the reason why I worry more long-term than short-term, you're so early in the Kenny Dillingham era, this is only year two, that you might not really worry about it right now. You might just kind of look at it and you're like, oh, well, you know, it's growing pains. It's just part of a new a new program, a new face. But if it's another bad season and then guys transfer during the season, after the season, sometime over the summer, now you worry about long-term. Short-term, I think they can survive it. And quite frankly, winning fixes everything. They go out and they win six games this year, go to a bowl game. You're happy and you move forward. You don't really worry about it. If you have another three win season, there will be questions about whether or not Jaden Rashada would have gotten you more wins. Fair enough to ask those questions, but that's where you end up finding yourself. But like I said, I do think ASU has a plan in place. I do think there is an option, there is a solution so they can succeed right now. And it's staring us right in the face. It's Occam's Razor. It's Sam Levitt. We're going to talk about him and more just a second. This is the Locked On Sunnables podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Game time is now the authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets easier and faster than before. Prices on Game Time app will actually go down as it gets closer to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. Save up to 60% off buying last minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and any other events near you. Flash deals will allow you to save even more with exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Zone deals. You can save more money. You pick a section, game time picks the seats. That all-in pricing, it's, it's a feature, and it's going to show you the total up front, which means there's no surprise fees. At checkout, you can get a panoramic view of your seat on the app before you buy and make sure that what you're getting is what you want. The lowest price guarantee means that game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. One more time, wherever you're getting your prices, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day, and a shout-out to my everydayers who are here every day. Let's wrap up the conversation with Mr. Sam Levitt. 
ASU might have their failsafe. It's Occam's razor. The most obvious solution is the one that's right in front of you. And ASU is going to be in a little bit of a panic. And rightfully so. You just lost one of the best recruits of the last 10 years. The best recruit of the Kenny Dillingham era. The potential face of the program that we were hoping for for three, four, five years. Gone. ASU is going to be scrambling to figure out a solution. They're going to be looking at the transfer portal for seniors, for young kids, someone who can come in and compete. They're going to be looking even harder at recruiting. Next year, they got Butter Tolufson, who's a four-star quarterback. He will be coming to the program. He could potentially be the starter for next year if this year doesn't go as planned. But they're going to continue to work. They're going to look for veterans. They're going to look for youngsters. They're going to push Trenton Borgay. They're going to push Navi Bruzon. But I'm telling you, the solution's right in front of you. Sam Levitt. Levitt, like I mentioned earlier, former four-star kid, same recruiting cycle as Jaden Rashada. Just as talented. Dude can throw it. He can move around. He's he's somebody that is able to improvise. He's somebody that is able to make those off-script plays that Jaden Rashada could make. I'm not saying they're one and the same, but I'm saying they both have a similar skill set. And even with losing Rashada, this is about as good a backup plan as you're going to have. With Sam Levitt, you have somebody that has checked everything off in the box. I understand that that's the eye test, but that's where we start. And he passes the eye test. So now we take it from there. Next, he's going to need to continue to prove it in camp, which he's looked good. Let's see if he continues to look good. From there, if everything goes according to plan, you might be better off. You might be better off with a kid that is not afraid of competition, looks at the fact that he probably came into the offseason thinking he was QB3. Behind Borgay, behind Rashada. Well, now he's QB1 because he's not afraid to compete. He's not afraid to go toe for toe, nitty gritty against whoever's in front of him. Doesn't matter if it's someone in his class. It doesn't matter if it's a veteran. Levitt's about that action, boss. Now you're looking at a guy who is just proving it. We're going to have to have some really interesting conversations with Kenny Dillingham, with Marcus Arroyo, with Sam Levitt, with Trenton Borgay, with his teammates. What's next? I'm telling you, this was probably best case scenario if Rashada did transfer, was to have Sam Levitt here. Was to have somebody just as talented, just as big of upside to be able to take over. Another thing to remember that I've said already, we are so early in the Kenny Dillingham era. If this was going to happen, it's good it happened now. You can you can argue that both ways. You can say this is a bad look to start. I take the opposite approach. And I tell you, you're still working out the kinks and you're still... You're still trying to get your footing. Guys are going to leave. It, it's it's just the way it is. Guys are going to leave under Kirby Smart and Nick Saban and Ryan Day. It is not isolated to Arizona State. This is not just an ASU problem. It's not. People are acting like the sky is falling. It's one player. Now, sure, if other stuff happens, then yeah, the sky is falling. But we've got the plan in place with Sam Levitt. He's a talented kid. He's outplayed Rashada. Sounds like you lost QB2, not QB1. Call me crazy. But Levitt looks like he can be the guy. And quite frankly, he deserves a fair shake.
He deserves your attention. I will be paying closer attention to him in the last few days of camp and for next Friday's uh, spring ball game, which if there was ever a reason for you guys to go, now is a reason to go. Go see the new quarterback. It's not Jaden Rashada. It's Sam Levitt. Go see Levitt live. See what he looks like. Go check it out. Great time to activate the Valley. Great time to rally together. I'm telling you, this might have ended up being a very good thing when it's all said and done for ASU. Because Sam Levitt is every bit as talented as Jaden Rashada is. You are losing one of your key young pieces. But you had someone to replace him with. If you didn't have Sam Levitt, you are absolutely, absolutely panicking. But you do have Sam Levitt. You do have the guy who is forced the hand of Rashada to transfer. That's the other part. This is the reason Rashada is transferring. Is this guy. So let's give him a shot. Let's give him a fair shake. It's, it's the best possible scenario for losing Jaden Rashada. Would be to have Levitt waiting. I'm excited to see what's next. It's going to be very difficult. And, you know, we knock, we knock on wood that it's not going to get worse. If we start losing more players, we're going to panic. But right now, in this moment, with some time to think about it, I do not think now is the time to panic. I think now is the time to get invested. I think now is the time to rally together. What the Suns do a few years ago, it was rally the valley, I think. Now's the time to rally the valley, to activate the valley. Let's get this thing going. I'm not done yet. You're not done yet. ASU is not done yet. It's a, fa a famous Randy Marsh once said, I didn't hear no bell. Sam Levitt didn't hear no bell. He is here to be the starter. If he earns it, yet to be seen. As of right now, he's he's it. And I'm not feeling bad about it. I want to know what you guys think. Keep it PG. Let me know what you guys think about Jaden Rashada leaving in the comments. Let me know if you're a Sam Levitt guy. Let me know what you think of the state of the program. Should we panic? Should we stay calm? Let me know. Drop a comment on YouTube. Hit me up on Twitter at RichieBrides36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Wherever you're getting your shows, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Appreciate you as always for tuning in, guys. We'll be keeping you up to date on the, on the transfer situation for ASU. I'll let you know what's going on at camp. I'll let you know how Sam Levitt looks. We'll keep you up to date on everything. So again, Now's never been a better time to subscribe to the podcast. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun